So earlier this year, I declared that the Fuji XS10 to be the winner of the travel, uh, travel camera shootout. And there kind of comes a time or a point in time when you're uh, using a camera where you kind of reach a tipping point. Do I start inveg investing more in Fuji and buying more lenses and more accessories or anything? Or just go ahead and stay with Sony? One of the cameras that really piqued my interest in the Sony system is the A7C. C standing for compact. And that's kind of uh, something that piqued my interest because the videos and the photos and everything should be pretty really good coming out of them considering all the internals and everything are pretty much an A7 III. But it's so much smaller than the uh, full, you know the regular size full frame cameras, it would be great for travel camera and a great for everyday shooter. But one of the things that worries me about about the Sony system is is the M, is the stabilization of the video, and you don't want just really really shaky footage. The A7C does offer in body image stabilization, and it's pretty comparable to the rest of the A, uh, Sony Alpha line. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that. But also, you can use Catalyst Browse with it. And that's something I really haven't looked into too much. And I wanted to take a look at that and see if that's a viable option to use. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start off by looking at some footage that I shot. I shot this with the a7 IV with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. This is just to get a base example of what the Sony uh, stabilization looks like with just a regular in-body image stabilization. So let's take a look at that now. see the in-body image stabilization of Sony just the regular in-body image stabilization it's not very good at all it, it, it shakes around a lot uh, it's just not very good for videos uh, when you're moving around and about out and about we're gonna try to get just a little bit better than that the introduction of the a7s3 they came out with what's called active stabilization and it's basically just an electronic image stabilization built into the camera. So I got my a7S III performed kind of the same test with this time with the active stabilization on. Let's take a look at that. see it's a little bit better I mean it's not the best in the world I mean it's not Panasonic or Olympics good but it is it is pretty good as far as uh, Sony is concerned and you know, I could I would consider it passable I mean it's not just dead level smooth or anything but it's not too bad and that's pretty much all you want just an improvement over the end body image stabilization built into the camera and that's what the active stabilization does it just gives you a little bit extra stabilization in the camera it does crop in a little bit but not enough to really matter. Now let's take a look at the standby, the Fuji XS10. And what I have going on with the Fuji XS10, I have the 16 millimeter 2.8 on there. And um, I have the in-body image stabilization. It's on, it's on all the time. And also I have the electronic image stabilization active. So let's take a look at it. Okay, okay, not bad. That's one of the reasons that I was, I bought the Fuji XS10 to begin with because the uh, stabilization of the video is pretty, pretty good. But we're gonna see if we can beat it with the Catalyst Browse. I took my A7S III. It's the only camera, the, it's the only full frame camera that I can stabilize in Catalyst Browse. I took it with a 20 millimeter 1.8 and I boosted the, it's basically the same shot as it was before, but I boosted the shutter speed up 
to 160 frames per second. That's one of the things you have to do with Catalyst Browse. Your shutter speed has to be jacked up just a little bit. And so you're not gonna get exactly the 180 degree rule that you know, you're supposed to have in shooting video. So I jacked up the shutter speed to 160 frames per second, and this is what it looks like. say is wow wow I mean that looks absolutely amazing amazing footage uh, with the Callus Browse uh, software but there's only one drawback to that that one minute clip right there took five minutes 20 seconds to process one minute tip clip five minutes and 20 seconds to process so I don't just don't know if that's going to be a viable option. So the first time I tried to render uh, on Catalyst Browse, I used my M1 Mac, and I thought, well, maybe since the new Apple Silicon is not optimized for all the programs, I should try it on my Mac, on my iMac, which is an Intel-based processor, and hopefully it may, may run a little bit smoother. So when I did it on my uh, M1 MacBook Pro, it took five minutes and 20 seconds. When I ran it on uh, my iMac, it took four minutes and 30 seconds, so I already saved a second. Both of those were rendering in 4K. So I decided to render in 1080p. And when I rendered in 1080p, it went down from four minutes and 30 seconds on my iMac to only three minutes on my iMac, which is a really, really good saving. So we went five minutes and 20 seconds on this, down to three minutes in 1080p on my iMac, which is a great time savings. So I thought, well, I want to try to do it on my Windows machine. I only have one Windows computer to my name. It's a Dell XPS 15, and it wouldn't even render on it. So don't even get me started on the Dell, on the Windows machines. I just don't have very good luck with them. And, uh, but it wouldn't render at all on a Dell XPS 15. It just said, can't do it, see you later. It must be a pretty difficult program to run because it makes the, all my computers, uh, the MacBook Pro, the iMac, uh, the Dell XPS, it makes them all kind of, the fans kick up and they stutter a little bit. Sometimes the uh, application freezes, uh, sometimes it crashes. Uh, it's, it, it's a really difficult program, I guess, for computers to run. Just so you know, it's not all just really smooth and everything. But that's how long it took me to render out a one minute clip and all three of all three machines that I have available to me. When you look at the Catalyst Browse, I think it is an amazing piece of technology. But from at least for me right now, it's just not worth it because it just takes too long to render uh, your footage on Catalyst Browse. Hopefully one day uh, they'll either speed up Catalyst Browse uh, because you really, really do get some really good results on Catalyst Browse. So hopefully the software will be more optimized someday. So Maybe a one minute clip will take a minute or less to do, and it'd be much more valuable to, you know, creators and stuff to use that program. But when you're multiplying that times of each, each minute of a clip by a factor of five, I'd rather have good stabilization built into the camera. So for now, I think I'm just gonna stick with the Fuji XS10 and maybe build on build on that ecosystem a little bit. While I'm really interested in the Sony a7C, I don't think it'll be viable for me until they release the a7C2 that comes out with active stabilization built into it. Until then, I'm just gonna stick with the old standby. The uh, Fuji XS10 has done me great so far, and I just don't see any reason to change as far as my travel camera goes. So anyway, if you've enjoyed the videos, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.